Okay, welcome back folks. Today I want to continue our work with the 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point with a can lure. Same topic as the last video. We're trying to try out a less expensive path to get into, you know, Mark 262 clones. Pretty inconsistent results in the last video. We had a lot of just random flyers and stuff, but we also shot some good groups, so it was a little bit confusing. Well, you guys down in the comments, a bunch of you have had success with this bullet, and a lot of you actually provided loads or your favorite powder, and there were a bunch of other people saying that they've never had any luck with this bullet, that they've had inconsistent results similar to what I saw. So what I want to do today is every single load that was mentioned in the comments section of the last video, I want to shoot it. Every powder that was mentioned, I want to shoot it. So this big mess is the load data for today. There was only one powder mentioned that I didn't have on hand, and it was one of the Shooter's World powders, but otherwise pretty much had them all. There's some low velocity stuff, there's some high velocity stuff, there's slow powders, there's fast powders, pretty good variety. So I've already loaded these up. Pretty dangerous little operation here, trying to keep 19 different powders and 19 different charge weights straightened out, matched up with one another, requires some attention. So uh, let's see, I wrote down some other things I wanted to mention from the last video. Okay, the seating stem fit that we ran into problems where we were marking up our bullets. I tried the other Hornady seating stem I've got and it wasn't any better. I tried the Lee seating die and it wasn't any better. So I ended up using my Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. It wasn't perfect, but it's the best. And we're gonna to return to that subject probably in the next video. Cause I'm thinking, well, first of all, I haven't even checked to see Hornady may have a stem for this. I might just need to order a stem, but if not, maybe we'll go through the process of trying to make a custom one. Someone mentioned that in my Hornady seating die, the lower part that, that floats had gotten stuck in the up position. I had, I did not mention that. And I think it was because I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was a little bit higher than I'm used to at my normal reloading bench. I, uh, yeah, I didn't notice that. So maybe that was up in there and kind of bound up a little bit crooked and causing some run out. Not sure. Someone brought up that my the uh, the M lock adapter that I had up here for the bipod in the last video might be hitting the gas block. And I'm always very careful about that because I have had that problem in the past. These aero precision hand guards are pretty beefy and big, so you got a lot of room in there. But some of the other ones I've, I have that are slimmer, you got to really watch yourself. So appreciate somebody bringing that. Somebody mentioned that my ejection pattern I looked like I was a little bit overgassed, and that's true. I'd shoot so much variety that I generally end up setting my gas block to where it is a bit overgassed with high velocity, heavy bullet loads. Because when we go to sh shooting faster powders, like today, we're going to run into a couple of them, like uh, Vitavori N135 or Hodgson H322. We'll probably see, you know, closer to an ideal ejection pattern with those. I, I use a superlative arms gas block. Uh, adjustable gas block. I, I really like it. I like these. I've got several of them and they are the easiest to adjust, but they still get carboned up and fouled up. And I don't like messing with them too much, but maybe something to keep in mind, you know, if nothing seems to be working, then, you know, turning down the gas, maybe it could have some effect. And somebody had brought up that like they can't remember if it was their velocity wasn't matching mine or their charge weight wasn't matching mine and saw a uh, couple of people talking back and forth about, you know, elevation changes being the likely cause. You know, I'm at about a thousand feet of elevation. That's always something to keep in mind with, you know, charge weights or velocities. I'm in Kentucky at, I think, just under a thousand feet. So you got to be aware of how your local conditions affect things. And if we go all the way back to the Mark 262 series, the very first video, I shot a box of factory ammo to get a good baseline for my situation and my gun, rather than just, you know, looking up the spec for the ammo or going by what somebody else had to say. So it never hurts to test yourself and always keep in mind that your situation might be a little different. I, thought, I think that's enough yapping. Let's get to some shooting. We've got a massive amount of shooting to do, 95 uh, rounds, 19 different groups. And I also loaded up, yeah, I loaded up some Mark 262 clone ammo. There's the same one we shot in the last video with uh, Alliant Power Pro Varmint and the 77 grain Match King. But this is with the Federal 205 primers, which is a little bit different than our normal recipe. It was that same, you know, coffee can batch of brass that we were working through in the last video. Is that it? Let's see. So the, the brass for today, it is, it's a different batch of Lake City. This has been fired in this gun before. It is still Lake City Brass. We've got CCI number 41 primers, which is our kind of our normal primer that I usually test with in this sort of work. And same overall length, so right around that 2.250, which a lot of you guys, whenever you provided loads, you gave your specific overall length, your specific brass, your specific primer. So it couldn't match everything perfectly. And I did actually look up in manuals and verify each one of these loads and my own experience and decided for myself whether they were something I wanted to shoot. 
One of the first ones we're shooting, it's a uh, Shooter's World Match Rifle. The load that was given for that was hotter than I felt comfortable shooting. Like it was a very hot load. So they might be much different altitude, but you know, whatever. Maybe they're in Antarctica. No way for me to be sure. So I don't want to shoot it. So we backed that one down a bit. Otherwise, everybody else, I was able to find another source that made me think I was okay with shooting that load. And there's one weird powder. It's Power Pro 4000 MR, which is a, a Magnum rifle powder that's not really ideal for this work. But I had somebody ask me whether it would work because with the powder shortages, that was all they could find. And they really want to find a way to, to, use, to use it. So... I pretty much just jammed a case full of 4000 MR and we're going to try it and see what happens. Hopefully it won't be dangerous. But that's like our fourth group. So we got to start out with some ciders. This is five rounds with the, with the Sierra Match King. The target's at 100 yards. This is the shot marker system. Over here on the right with that black box, I'm going to try and somehow keep track of everything that's going on today. I have no idea how I'm going to accomplish that. We'll probably just need to stick with uh, group size. Because I'm going to grab velocity with the Lab Radar Chronograph today. But some of these are high velocity, some are low velocity. It doesn't really matter that much. But we'll keep track anyway, just, just to be sure. I did switch the scope out on this gun just for the heck of it. And we're shooting from a rear bag. So this is my Vortex Viper PST. And I've already got it zeroed. So let's see what happens. Okay, that's not a bad start. 0.75 inches. No weird shots. So it looks like we're good. So our first load with the 75 grain bullets is uh, Shooter's World Match Rifle. 24.5 grains of it. All right, that's a good start. That's an extremely good start. 0.79 inch group, velocity 2708, standard deviation 19.1. So the next powder is Accurate 2520. Same charge weight that we shot with Shooter's World Match Rifle. We found them to be very similar powders. A little bit bigger group that time, 1.19 inches, similar velocity, similar SD numbers. Good deal. You know, with these five shot groups, I, I don't know that we're going to come out of this with any great data set that we're going to learn a ton from, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know. I'm going to try and take a lot of breaks today. I kind of got all day to shoot this and got a few tasks around the yard to complete. So to keep from getting the gun too hot, I'm going to try and pace myself. So next up is 24.7 grains of Power Pro 2000 MR. So my plan might not really be working out because I think I took a 20 or 30 minute break. So I, did I come back to a cold gun? Is that why this first shot went low? Let's hide it real quick. Yeah, so the other four went into 0.35 inches. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need to shorten my breaks. I don't wanna worry about that all day, you know? So 10 or 15 minutes max between groups, I'm thinking. And then just monitor, monitor heat as we go. Interesting group though. Very, very interesting. So that was a pretty light load of Power Pro 2000 MR. We've pushed that powder pretty hard in the past so backing it down there to uh to 2489 maybe that's a clue you know maybe that's what it takes to get this bullet to shoot okay so that brings us to power pro 4000 mr and this is definitely the most likely to blow my face off today so i tell you what let's just put one of them in here to start with and i should pick up all the other brass to make sure i know where this one goes plus i've got a chicken that came to see us you guys want to come up here and say hello dude Stay behind the muzzle. Basic range safety. You're not allowed up there. Okay, the range is mostly clear of chickens. Let's, uh, let's see what happens on this first one. Okay, it looks like the bullet made it down range. It locked the bolt back. Velocity was 2425. The piece of brass looks good. 
But the problem with shooting suppressed like this is all of them are dirty and you can see my fingers always get all gunky. That was from feeding that round. But that wouldn't surprise me if maybe this isn't sealing the gases as well as it should. But it's really hard to tell on my brass. All right, I'm going to shoot the other four. Now this is 26.5 grains of 4000 MR. And this was all that I felt comfortable putting in there, especially with this seeding stem. These were by far the most damaged by that seeding stem. Let's see if they group. Well, how about that? That went better than I hoped for or expected. 0.83 inches. So 2438 with a 23.7 standard deviation. So some other things I was looking for there, other than, you know, catastrophic failure and a bolt carrier through my frickin' forehead, uh, hang fires. I didn't feel any hang fires whatsoever. It felt like they were, you know, they were lighting off the way they were supposed to. Our, our velocities, you know, our extreme spread was 59 feet per second, which is about, you know, what we're seeing with the other powders today. Now this was with the CCI 41 primer, which I've always, you know, heard is a magnum equivalent primer. It's a magnum, magnum type primer. I don't think I'd want to try, you know, a standard primer, or if I did, I would be very uh, on the lookout for hang fires or really wild extreme spreads or anything that pointed toward ignition not happening in a consistent way. Didn't really feel any of that. Pretty decent group, you know, 2438, not exactly high velocity there, but it looks like it might be, you know, something useful for a guy that's sitting on 4000 MR and doesn't have any other way to get rid of it. Just, you know, proceed with caution. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Now this next load of 23.0 grains of H4895, this is whenever I switched over the seating die. So the first two shots were loaded with the Lee die and they've got a little ring around them. And then the, the last three shots were with the Forster die and they look better. So if we catch a flyer in this group, I'll be interested to see if, it was, if it's one of the first two shots. Okay, so two, you know, it definitely, it's up in a spot. We haven't seen any of the others uh, hit, right? Like this is really kind of our first flyer of the day here. And it was one of those first two shots. Let's hide this one real quick and see what the rest, yeah, the rest are into about an inch. And, you know, they're grouping in the area we expect them to group in on the target. Hmm, interesting. Average velocity was 2709. But velocities were kind of all over the place. We had one that was all the way up to 2750 and then several down in the 2600s. Our standard deviation was 32.2 .2 and our extreme spread was 77. It's kind of frustrating. Everybody loves uh, H4895 and I just never seem to have the best luck with it. Hmm. All right, got to move forward. So this is IMR4895. Same charge, 23.0 grains. Okay, that's not bad. Did I screw it up too bad here with the fifth? Let me hide it. Yeah, 0. 0.57. And then it went up to 0. 0.73. That's okay. 0. 0.73 is still pretty good. Much lower velocity than the last group, 2584. But like H4895, really crappy 32.2 .2 standard deviation and an extreme spread of 79. Okay, next up is another classic powder. IMR4064. Also 23.0 grains. Well, we lost one low that time, didn't we? That first shot is what screwed us up. Looking at, you know, kind of our point of impact and comparing with the last couple groups. I think these were both trying, right? IMR 4895 and IMR 4064. Both look promising to me. So yeah, 4064 was a 1.29 inch group, velocity 2537, and 
an even worse standard deviation of 37.4, 92 feet per second extreme spread. These SD numbers are just crazy. Not sure what the heck to think. Now I did pull out my beam scale for this loading because there were so many things going on. I wanted to be able to set the scale one time and then weigh all the charges. Sometimes, you know, when I'm using an electronic scale, it's constantly back and forth to my, to my notebook to, to make 100% sure that I'm weighing to the right number. So I thought the beam scale would be easier not to make a mistake with. Maybe I wasn't as precise. Maybe I've got my charge weights a little bit wonky today. It's possible. I mean, it's been, been a good while since I've used a beam scale. All right, moving on up to Hodgton Varget. This time it's 24.0 grains. Well, that group looks familiar, doesn't it? Drop the first shot, and then the others group a little bit better. This was a bit higher velocity, 26-22, versus our last group. This was 25-37. And both of these were the first shot off the magazine. You know, maybe we've got some feeding deal going on. Not going to overreact here. So the next group is 24.0 grains of Reloader 15. Well, that ain't very pretty either. All right, 1.22 inches, 2708 feet per second, 14.5 standard deviation, stream spread at 39. So our first target here, we really didn't, didn't find a whole lot that was impressive. Okay, next up is 24.0 grains of Vitavori N140. I did take an extended break, so the guns had a bunch of time to cool down, I, so I shot one uh, side around just off into the berm. So here we go. N140. It looks like one of my shot marker sensors gave a little error there. The group looks good, just comparing it with what I'm seeing through the scope, it looks exactly the same. Okay, false alarm there maybe. All right, so even with our warm up shot, we still put that first one up high. So we ended up with a 1.2 inch group. Like half of our group so far have been almost exactly 1.2 inches. So without that one, the rest went into 0.7. I guess at least today, the flyers don't seem to be quite as wild as they were in the last video, but they're there and they're, they're screwing up every group. All right, I need to go check the cable on this bottom left sensor and then we can move forward. Tell you what, this list of powders is pretty awesome. So the next powder is Hodgton H322, 21.5 grains of it. Yeah, this next group of powders will be interesting because like these are some of the faster burning offerings. So, all right, here we go, H322. Man, I should have stopped at three. Oh, the stupid shot marker still complaining about that left sensor. Whatever. This is an easy one to gauge. Yeah, the holes look exactly, exactly the same. Wow, 0.56 inches. What the heck were we shooting before this one dropped low? Four of them into 0.25 inches. What were those first three? Wow, three shot group, 0.18 inches. <laughs> That'll do. That will do. This just seems to happen a lot. Well, kind of like I was mentioning, like we're, we're getting into some interesting fast burning powders. It's like whenever you go on this end, you're not going to get, you know, the crazy velocities. You're not going to get things like that. But man, the groups are awesome. Or at least they can be. I'll tell you that, another of the good things that kind of brings back my confidence in, shoot, in my shooting. Like I've been feeling like I'm holding well today. I feel like I'm shooting well. But without confirmation on paper, sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's easy to doubt yourself. So next is 22.0 grains. See, where did we, yeah, so 0.56 inches, for that H322 group, velocity 2639, standard deviation 17.2. Okay, next up, Vitavori N135.
So apparently that's all you have to do with this bullet is just, yeah, shoot, shoot some uh, faster burning powders. 0.69 inches there with Vitavori N135. Velocity was 2571 and standard deviation was 11.1. .1. That's by far our best standard deviation today. Okay, next up, 22.5 grains of Hodgdon Benchmark. I need to switch to three shot groups. Wow, so all right, that one went way out and it felt like a really good shot. I was shocked to see it down there. I made it a 1.03 inch group and the other four went into 0.39 inches. Velocity 2647, standard deviation 13.8. Okay, good deal. I'm gonna have to go back down range. I think what happens is my, uh, yeah, the target side of this whole electronic system, I need to restart it or something. I've had to do that in the past when it was giving me weird alarms. Okay, next up, 8208 XBR, 23.2 grains. And once again, I'm the three shot Frickin' champion of the universe, but can't put together those last two. Yeah, first three were 0.34 inches, and our final number was 0.81 inches. Still not too bad. Velocity was 26.33, standard deviation 19.8, and an extreme spread of 47. All right, next up is 22.9 grains of AR comp. I'm not going to mess this one up. Okay. Heck yeah, 0.59 inches. And shot marker shows a 6.4 SD down at the target. I know our velocity was high. I was watching it as the shots were coming in. Probably like 27.30 or so. Yep, 27.32. Yeah, 27.32. Standard deviation 12.8, extreme spread of 32.59 inch group. I like that one a lot. All right, we're finishing this thing off with some ball powders, starting with 23.5 grains of Ramshot Tack. Okay. That got ugly pretty quick. See what the best four were. Yeah, point, point 0.92 for the best four and a total size of 1.41 inches. I was afraid that might happen and I'm afraid it might continue. Next up is Winchester 748. This is also a 23.5 grain load. So we go from this group that was spread out all horizontal like and now this one's all vertical like 1.11 inches velocity was 25.42 with a 23.6 standard deviation let's move on 24.0 grains of cfe 223 That's not a bad group, 0.75 inches. And it's interesting there with, you know, CFE 223, a pretty slow burning powder. If we go back, let's see, what was our, yeah, this was AR comp, pack 748. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even know what I'm thinking about here yet. It's just, it's just interesting that it grouped and it grouped low, lower than we've seen with, with other powders, right? It just, it's the first one to hold it all together and kind of be a little bit lower than we're used to seeing. Then again, maybe just this shot number one is a flyer and you know you move shot one up there and then we're talking about a whole different thing. Velocity was 2539, 
with a standard deviation of 59.0 and an extreme spread of 135. So velocity was all over the place, which I'm kind of used to seeing that with CFE 223 in 223. The SDs always seem to be crap. But then take that same powder over into a six millimeter arc and it's one of our best and gives us our best SDs. I don't know, man, powder's weird. Let's see what it looks like without this one that was low. Yeah, those others are 0.64. So yeah, not a bad group. So one more to go. Our last powder is one of my least favorites. It is Hodgton BLC2. It never seems to shoot well for me. And I think it holds the record for the worst group in the entire Mark 262 series. Let's see what it does here. 25.0 grains. Like a perfect double group. Yep, sure is. So a 1.23 inch group, velocity 2683, standard deviation 19.8, extreme spread 49. I think it's interesting that this is our last group because I, I, I like I don't have a because I mean I think it's a perfect picture of what we're fighting here double grouping shifts in point of impact you know a lot of what we're calling a flyer I bet if we shot a 10 15 20 shot group the group would either string out toward that flyer or maybe start double grouping like this or something I'm gonna go pull the target take a minute to think all right, so this is for the guy who commented in the last video that he doesn't tra trust the, the electronic target system. So this was our first batch of groups. Do you see any that you like? What about this guy? Is that promising? I don't know what powder this is. And I thought maybe that'd be a good exercise. Like, okay, that, that's a good looking, good looking group. I don't really like kind of what's going on here or there. Maybe, maybe that one, maybe we'll come back to that one. But if we go to the second 10 groups, that looking real good. Same thing there. Things are getting a little, little squirrely here. That's not bad, but that, that's good. I like that one. What do you think? Have I circled all of the interesting ones? Go back to the first target. Yeah, let's start with those four. Let's see, so that was my cider dot. So that was the sixth powder we shot, which was IMR 4895. Hopefully that's right. That one is H322, that one is N135, and then that one is AR Comp. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, of those powders, you know, I know AR Comp, we can get some pretty good velocity out of that one. What was our, we're already there. Yeah, so that group was 2732 feet per second. Would you chicken shut up? They're definitely not gun shy. Yeah, I'm coming out of this video. AR comp is looking like the one maybe we'll choose to work with here for a little bit. So maybe we take this AR comp and we start at our 2.250 inch overall length and just work our way shorter and see what happens. And if that's successful or if it's inconclusive, then maybe we go to another powder and do the same thing. But I'm feeling pretty good about the situation, right? We at least have some hope because there's a whole lot of mediocre, like including like all of the classic favorite, everybody's favorite 223 powders, like Varget, Reloader 15, you know, Vitivori N140, all that crap. I expected to find some of those that maybe surprised us. So I think that's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.